Good morning. Grace and peace to you and welcome to Old North Church on this holiday weekend, Indigenous Peoples Day. Welcome to our online congregation who will either be with us right now live stream or catch up with us later. You have all come into this sacred place and this sacred time. You have all come into a vibrant community of faith. We're an open affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ. We have a vision that is moving us into God's future. I am Reverend Don Remick, along with Lindsay, we are the pastors here of the church. And if you're one of the folks who are new to the church, we're especially glad that you are here. We'd love to get to know you. There's a visitor card you can fill out. And if you have kids, today is a sort of multi-generational. There is no church school program, but you can always go out and stretch your legs in the back if you need to. There are a variety of announcements in the bulletin. If I were to take time to highlight any of them, I'd need to do them all, and we'd be here all morning. And that actually is a sign of the vibrancy and the strength of our congregation. I hope you will take time, except during the sermon, to look at all the announcements and get to know what's happening in the church. But for now, will you join with me in the call to worship? Like a whisper that lures us to safety, Strong as a shout that bids us to come. Gentle as a prayer that eases our worries. Like a clear bell that rings out our name. Your word comes to us, loving God. It calls us, comforts us, and urges us to depart from evil and do good. To seek peace and pursue it. Still speaking God, open our hearts to hear you and free our voices to praise you. Let us sing.
pray with me. Here is what you require of us, God, to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with you, our God. It is so simple and so difficult. Here in this world of injustice, hatred, and hubris, you call us to another way. Lead us, guide us, and turn us around when we get off track. We pray in the name of the one who embodied your love and taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We have high hopes for ourselves. There is so much that we want to be, so much that we want to do. Sometimes we are stunning in our ability to love one another. Sometimes we fall short. Today we bring ourselves into the presence of a loving God and call to mind the ways we have loved and the ways we have failed to love. In the silence, we'll reflect on how this week has gone. What opportunities to show love have you taken? Which have you missed? Let us confess together. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us amend what we are and direct what we shall be so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And together, let us proclaim the good news. We follow a God of love. On this fresh new morning, our God has given us a fresh new start. Like the fall trees, we let go of what is no longer serving us. We root ourselves in the love of God and drink deeply from God's mercy. in our service each week for the youngest ones among us. So sometimes we have 15 kids and sometimes we just have a couple. But I'd like to invite, if they're willing, to come spend some time with me, Quinn and Marin, to come forward. Yeah? It's okay, bud. If you don't want to come, you don't got to come. <laughs> So I'm wondering, are there any rules in your house, Marin? Oh, a quick nod from Marin. What sorts of rules? 
What would you say is the most important rule in your house? I'm really putting you on the spot. Anyone else? What's the most important rule in your house? Hmm? Be kind? Wash the dishes. That's a good, most important rule. Who's the dishwasher in your house, Don? It's you, yeah. So there's all sorts of rules that we have. Some of them are more important than others. Some of them are less important. And Jesus tells us that there is one most important rule, and that is to love God with all our heart and soul and mind and strength and to love our neighbors as ourselves. Yeah, you see something in there, Quinn? That's right. Yeah, so what we are going to do in church today is a little bit of practicing of how we can love our neighbors. There are so many ways that we can love our neighbors. Sometimes we can love our neighbors who are our spouses by doing things like washing the dishes. That's an act of love that I'm working on in my household. Sometimes we can show love by being curious about what's happening in someone's life, by offering them comfort. Sometimes we can show love by letting people exist in spaces the way they need to exist in spaces, like a little one who needs to move her body, right? And last week, after we heard a sermon about love, our friend Julie, is Julie here today? Our friend Julie had a really great idea. Julie is someone who's really good at showing love. And she had something that happened to her that's called a stroke, which is a problem in the brain that then has a bunch of different effects on your body. And after she got better from her stroke, she said, you know what I want to spend all of my time doing? Helping other people who have had that happen to them too. And she got inspired by our sermon last week and said, I wonder if the kids could help me help these other people who are stroke survivors. And I said, I bet they could. They take gifts every month to the people at a special hospital for people who are recovering from strokes and other sorts of things. And she wondered if we as a church could help write some notes that could go with those gifts to let people know that we love them, that we're taking care of them, that we're looking out for them. So what I got today, because I wasn't sure, it's a holiday weekend, I wasn't sure if we would have two kids, or in my dream last night, there were 20 kids this morning, and I didn't have enough. <laughs> so I made little packets that have notes that say things, what does that say? It says, you've got this. We've got some that say, you've got this. We've got some that say, you are loved. You are not alone. And so I was wondering if any of the little people or any of the not as little people would want to help make some of these notes. I've got some coloring implements. I've got these notes. And so if you are someone who likes to do a little bit of coloring while you listen and would like to do some coloring during the service today, you could raise your hand right now. Does anyone want one of these bags? Maren, do you think you could take a bag over to the people who are holding their hands up? Yeah, should we do that together? Yeah, let's do that together. First, how about we bless the children who are here and the children who are not here with this blessing in the bulletin. May you know that you belong here and can always come home. May you grow, learn, and question. May you feel the love of God wherever you go. And hands up if you want the cards. Okay.
one of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that he answered them well, he asked him, Which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all of your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, you are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and besides him there is no other. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself. This is much more important than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask him any questions. We have heard these words from scripture. Let us find within them the word of God. Let's pray. It is your commandment to love. Please just guide me the words of my mouth, the meditations of our heart to draw us more deeply into that. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. It was the Dalai Lama who said the need for love lies at the very foundation of human existence. This past week, you may have noticed, there was a day marked as National Teacher's Day, or perhaps more accurately, I think they called it National Buy Your Teacher a Cup of Coffee Day. <laughs> I know that because my daughter is a teacher and she depends upon that coffee. Several decades ago, a study was done at John Hopkins. You may have heard it before. A professor gave a group of students an assignment to go out into one of the poorest sections in one of the most crime-ridden sections of the city and investigate the background of 200 boys between the ages of 12 and 16. Look at their background, their environment, and the nature of their lives and determine what their future, future chances might be. After looking at statistics 
after looking at the environment of the graduate students, determined that 90% of those 200 boys would end up spending some time in jail. 25 years later, another group of students was sent out and given the job of trying to go and find those boys and test that prediction. They went back to the same area. Some of the boys by then had left or a few had died, but they found 180 of the boys still there. And of that 180, only four had spent any time in jail. That went against the prediction, so they began to investigate a little bit deeper. And they came across a common statement in all of the boys who would say, well, there was this teacher they pressed further and discovered that for 75% of the boys, it was the same woman, the same teacher. So they went to try to find her. Now in a nursing home, now in a retirement home, they came and found her and expressed what they had found and asked her, what was it that you did? Could you give any reason why these boys should have remembered her at all? No, she said. No, I really couldn't. But then her eyes glazed over for a second as she went into that place of memory and she said musingly more to herself than to the questioners, I loved those boys. I loved those boys. <clears throat> Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. would say, darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that. In the gospel this morning, we encounter teachers of the law, scribes, Pharisees, Sadducees. They were the keepers, the gatekeepers of the rules and regulations of religion in their day. They were not driving out darkness. They were not driving out hate. They were the majority, and they were concerned about Jesus. They wanted Jesus out of the picture. They wanted to embarrass him and discredit him sideline him into irrelevance and oblivion like an ousted speaker of the house. They are measuring everything by power and influence and protection and their agenda. The context is it's Holy Week. Jesus has just come into Jerusalem with a triumphal entry. You know the story of Palm Sunday, what we call Palm Sunday today. And that has caught the attention of those teachers in authorities. They are anxious and they are angry. He is becoming more popular and their popularity is waning. And they're worried that the crowd he's drawing should get the attention of Rome that might come down hard on them again. So they are trying to test him, catch him, and trap him with some questions that turn out to be really silly questions. Like, you know, there was this woman and she married a man and the man died. She married another man and that man died. She married another man and that man died. And when she gets to heaven, which one gets to be her husband? Silly questions that they're using in rabbinical style to try to trick him into a trap. And then there is a serious question. Which commandment is the first? Washington Irving said, love is never lost. If not reciprocated, it will flow back and soften and purify the heart. What's the first commandment? Like Lindsay said, wash the dishes. But Jesus, Jesus goes old school. Probably one of the most technologically advanced sports of the day. What would you guess it is? If you're in the early service, you'll know football. Technically advanced because they have so many cameras on the field and in the stands, they can actually capture a 360 view of every, any person and any play. They have overhead cameras, they have slow-mo replay, they can challenge the calls and look at it on a screen from four or five different angles. They have computer-generated graphics showing you where that first down line is in the line of scrimmage. They have ways in which they can pinpoint everything right down with laser focus. But when it comes to the game's most important aspect, determining exactly where the ball is supposed to go, how far the offense has moved it towards the first down, the way that's done today is the same way it was done in 1906, the year that the NCAA determined that first down would be 10 yards and not five, the day that the NCAA determined that the forward pass was now legal in the sport, and they wrote in the rule books, 
To assist in measuring the progress of the ball, it's desirable to provide two light poles about six feet in length connected at their lower end with a stout cord or a chain 10 yards in length. Football is still old school. So was Jesus' answer. You will love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. To be brave is to love someone unconditionally without expecting anything in return, so says Madonna. Jesus would have liked that quote, would have appreciated those words from Madonna. And when Jesus speaks the commandment, he uses Greek. His native language is Aramaic, and the ancient commandment itself would have been in Hebrew, but he uses a Greek word. In Greek, there are a number of words for love he could have chosen. Eros, you know, for erotic love or intimate love. Philia, from Philadelphia, for friendship love. Storge, which is the love of family. Mania, which is obsessive love. Or pragma, which is love of duty and obligation. But Jesus uses another word that I trust you've heard before. The word is agape, love. It is a unique form of love. The kind of love that gives, expecting nothing in return. And you are to love with everything in you, heart, soul, mind, and strength. That is the totality of your decision, of your volition, of your character, of your capacity. It is not love a feeling. It is love a choice. A choice for a way of being in the world. And it defines the nature and the intention of God in God's yearning for us. Love recognizes no barriers, writes Maya Angelou. We have a daily devotion that comes out from the UCC every day by the Still Speaking Writers Group, and one of those is a woman named Mary Ludi. She's a friend of mine. She is an amazing woman, a teacher, a scholar, a historian, a preacher, and a pastor, now retired, taking annual trips out to Spain. In this past week, she wrote about St. Francis because this past week was also the feast of St. Francis. And I want to read to you what she wrote. In a famous story about the young Francis of Assisi, he came across a leper in the road. Townspeople regard, regarded lepers warily, too often showed but often showed compassion, offering them a loaf of bread or a coin. If, that is, they could get past their revulsion, Francis never could. Yet that day, impelled by some mysterious inevitability, the young, wealthy libertine dismounted, knelt before the afflicted man, and kissed his disfigured hand. After Francis began attracting followers, their first ministry together was with lepers. It's not surprising then that the story of his spontaneous embrace of that leper on the road would come to be regarded as the radical conversion the moment he became a saint. But Francis never spoke about converting that encounter with a leper, never mentioned a kiss. Instead, in his final testament, he recalled simply that God had led him among lepers to live with them, to share their lot, it was his daily rub that gradually drew him out of the world and into Christ's arms. Mary Ludy continues, If Francis is a saint, it's not because one day he didn't turn away from lepers. It was because he didn't turn, he didn't turn away a thousand times more. It was because his life was an ever-expanding, ever-deepening, turning towards the suffering world. Because he understood agape love. Lisa Hoffman writes, love is like the number pi, natural, irrational, and very important. The religious authorities wanted love by the numbers. They wanted transactional love. You will get love, you'll get status, you'll get power and authority if you follow our rules, if you follow our agenda. You will get that love because you have done that in the past. It's all transactional, but Jesus goes old school. Love is a decision, a choice of how to live life. It is beyond warm and fuzzy feelings. It is a choice freely given, especially to the least of these, the lepers of our world, 
the people that we shun or leave in the margins or prejudice or discriminate against. It is a love that is given sacrificially, generously. It is a whole-bodied, whole soul, whole being, love that expects nothing in return. One more quote. A new commandment I give you. Love one another as I have loved you, so must you love one another. It is written, they will know us by our love. May it be so. Amen. Will you pray with me? Oh, Holy One, we have seen it for ourselves. How love changes things. How the love of one teacher, one neighborhood, could transform the lives of over a hundred boys. We have seen in our own lives how love changes things of someone taking a chance on us or reaching out to us can alter the course of our lives. Oh, God of love, help us to follow in the ways of love. Your law of love has transformed the wilderness into a land of milk and honey before, and it can do it again if we are willing to follow that law of love and walk in the ways of Jesus. If we are willing to turn and turn again towards the suffering of this world instead of turning away or distracting ourselves or numbing ourselves. And so today, we turn towards the suffering of the world. We turn towards the suffering of places of war. We pray for peace between Russia and Ukraine. We pray for peace between Israel and Palestine. We pray for peace in all of the many places where war has broken out around this world. We turn towards the suffering in this world. We pray for migrants who have left their countries hoping only for a better life. We pray that you would open the doors of love to them and empower us to open the doors of our hearts. We pray for those who face daily discrimination, both from people and from legal systems. We remember today especially transgender and non-binary kids who are finding it harder and harder to live lives as their true selves. Holy One, there is so much suffering in this world. Help us to see what is ours to see. Help us to love who is ours to love. Help us to follow you, trusting and remembering that we are just a few people in a whole world of people who are seeking to love. In the silence, we call to mind those places of suffering that draw most dearly on our hearts. Help us to see our place in the work of love. Help us to turn towards the suffering and not get overwhelmed, but be filled with the courage that comes from being people of love and justice. 
who follow in Jesus' footsteps and pray in his name. Amen. Church, we are called not to just love with words, but to love with deeds, to put our money where our mouth is. This church is one that seeks to live out the love and justice of Jesus here in Marblehead and all over the world. And each one of you are a participant in that love. At this time of offering, I invite you to call to mind all of the many ways that you serve this world in love. And I invite you to give generously to the mission of this church. The deacons will come forward to receive the offering.
us pray. Oh God, we dedicate it all to you. Those gifts that have been offered in these plates, those gifts that have been offered online by those of us who can't be trusted to remember our checkbooks, those gifts that we offer one another, and the many acts of love that we do throughout the course of the day, we dedicate all of it to you, God, and ask that you would use it to increase the love in this world. We pray this in the name and in the presence of Jesus. Amen.
heart and altar God's love, God's agape love, God's sacrificial love, the flame. May you take that love out into the broken world around you, the broken lives around you, the broken globe around you. May you bring that love to a world that needs that light. May God's peace go with you all along the journey. May God's joy be with you each and every moment, and may God's love fill your heart. Amen. Amen.